All right, everyone. We're going to talk about the cell, which is something I know you've studied before, especially if you're taking this class. You've seen it. You've studied it. You know it. End of video. We're done, right? It was probably tricky because it's a lot of internal things that are really small and you can't see, so it's hard to picture what they're doing. So the way I like to approach it is I like to come up with an analogy where you compare it to things that you can see and that you are familiar with because it is an internal working mini environment, just like the environment you live in. So we're going to compare it to a city. So this is going to be our plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is a phospholipid bilayer, which basically means you're going to have two layers. So what I want you to picture for our city is basically like a double chain link fence. Some things can blow through it, like gases, and some things uh, can't. And it's going to control and be semi-permeable that way. And so I like to think of this as our border. Now, to get into the city, you're going to have to have basically border control. So there's going to be areas where it's kind of like customs, right? You're going to have to show your credentials, make sure that you're supposed to be entering so you can have channels or you could have carriers and you have to have the right shape to get through. So these are going to be our transport proteins. And that's going to be your border control. So you have say over the large things that get in. Now let's talk about what's happening on the inside. So in the center of our city, we're going to have the area that houses the person that's in charge of all the information. So I like to think of this as our town hall. So this is gonna be our nucleus. And that'll be our town hall. Because that's where we're gonna house the one that has all the information and makes all the decisions. So inside of here, the person if we're looking at our analogy, it would be our mayor, but in real life, that's our DNA. So DNA has all the information, and it kind of tells everybody what to do. Another thing that's interesting about our nucleus here, our town hall, is they have a department for making workers. This is going to be like your HR department. And so for our city, this is called the nucleolus. And so this is going to be HR. They make the workers. The work workers can work from home, so like freelance workers floating around, or they can work at a factory that's attached to the nucleus. So you can see them kind of dotted around the edges here. And so those workers, for a living, their job is making protein. And so these are called ribosomes. So these are our protein makers. You have a factory here filled with these protein makers. So what do you think the factory makes? Well, it makes protein. And so this factory, because it has a bunch of bumps on it, is going to be called our rough ER, rough endoplasmic reticulum. And so that rough ER is our protein factory. You do have a factory that lacks those workers. And so since we don't have bumps, we would call that the smooth ER. Now, since you don't have the protein makers, I remember I talked about them being your workers. Since you don't have workers, think fat and lazy. So think sugars and carbs, like Twinkies and Ho-Ho's. So this is going to be our carb and lipid factory. Now, everything that you're making inside of these factories, you do need to be able to ship off. So you'll make little trucks that'll carry things around in the cell, and you're gonna have a shipping center. So you'll have an area which kind of looks like a bunch of flattened pancakes. And you'll have these little trucks that can merge with it or pinch off of it. And so this right here is the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus, I like to think of it as UPS because what it does is it will modify, group things together, package them, store them for a little bit, and then ship them off. These little trucks that they're making to ship things off in, those are called the vesicles. And so those are your little UPS trucks. Now, if we're going to ship things around, we should also have a means of transportation. So we need road system. And so within our cell, we'll have large ones. I like to think of these like highways. And you'll also have smaller ones and some like medium-sized roads. And so these are actually going to collectively make up your cytoskeleton because it's also going to serve as your framework for the cell. So these little roads are going to be your microtubules for the big ones. 
So think of those as your highways. Your microfilaments are going to be your small ones. So these are tiny roads. And you have your intermediate filaments, which are kind of like the middle size. Which are going to be like the middle size roads. So they allow for transport, things can travel through them. Kind of picture tubes like the Jetsons, because remember, this is a ball, it's not a flat structure. So you have tubes going in different directions and it helps hold the shape. So just like our skeleton helps hold our shape, these three things here make up the cytoskeleton of the cell. So it's got a big role in structural framework. So you're making up the skeleton of the cell. In between all of this, the entire environment of the cell is going to be, as I'm looking at my hand and not you, sorry. <laughs> everything on the inside of our cell is going to be our cytoplasm. So cytoplasm is everything. Cytosol would just be kind of like the air. So if you think of cytosol as the environment, or sorry, cytoplasm as the environment, So cytoplasm is everything, so it's environment on the inside. Cytosol would just be like the air. So in the case of a cell, this is the fluid that you have, everything bathed in. And that's going to be our fluid. So there is a difference. Cytoplasm environment includes the buildings. Cytosol is just the fluid that's between those buildings. And I say these buildings, these are all organelles. Think of organelles as like organs of a cell, kind of how like your organs in your body do individualized functions to keep you alive. These all are doing individualized functions to keep the cell alive. Now we still have a couple more we haven't talked about. One of them is everybody's favorite. So we have these factories. We have to have energy to be able to run those factories and make their products. So we will have built into our city a power plant, which is our mitochondria. And so that's going to be our power plant. With our power plant, the form of energy that we're going to make is ATP. So don't forget that. That's just energy. <laughs> so we're making ATP from there. Now, the last two things deal with cleaning and they will look the same. So if you were to try to identify them, on their own, you would have a hard time doing that. You would need a description for it. So they both deal with cleaning. One is going to be a peroxisome. The other one's going to be a lysosome. They both have a role in cleaning. So think peroxide and lysol. So it reminds you that they clean. But the way they do that is going to be different. So peroxisome, thinking about neutralizing toxins. So I like to think of this as like your cleaning crew, where they'll come spray a cleaner on the table, wipe it down. So you're going to neutralize toxins here. So this is going to be your cleaner. Versus lysosome would be more about breaking things down. So this would be like your garbage truck, where you would put it on the side of the road. So instead of cleaning off the table and neutralizing it, it would be like breaking the table down, crumpling it up, and then redistributing its parts. So lysosome would be your trash collector. It does that by having enzymes on the inside. So it can compact the debris from the cell, break that down using the enzymes, and then dump it outside of our city. All right, so hopefully kind of seeing it laid out this way helps things stick a little bit better because now that you can kind of picture them with things in the real world, maybe you'll remember what they do inside of you. Thanks for watching.